Hey guys, it's Stan here with another video. So in this one, I wanna talk about computers and power consumption, and more specifically, how much power can a RTX 3090 and a Threadripper 24 core 3960X CPU pull from the wall with uh, this right here? And this is a kilowatt edge power meter. Uh, I actually picked this up because uh, the numbers that I was seeing with this kilowatt power meter has been astronomically high and I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't defective so I actually picked this thing up and we'll take a look talk about the results and uh, the numbers may actually be very surprising for you guys so let's get into it now these power meters are relatively inexpensive you can pick these things up for about 30 or 40 dollars on Amazon uh, depending on the model that you get. But uh, this specific version, the Edge, it comes in two different pieces here. And what you'll see here is that it's got the cables. So you can have this plugged into the wall and you'll have a little readout, which I could have on the table so that I don't have to crawl underneath the table to see what the numbers are. So that's kind of nice. Now I can make sure to link this in the description down below for you guys to check out. Now, the reason why I wanted to make this video initially was because of the absurd numbers that I was seeing on this power meter. I was seeing anywhere from 1100 watts to 1200 watts during gaming loads such as uh, Heaven Benchmark or while well, I was playing Cyberpunk 2077. But then, based off of what I was seeing in IQ uh, during those times, I was seeing anywhere from 600 to 700 watts. So, there was just such a big difference. I, I couldn't explain why I was seeing such high numbers. And that's part of the reason why I ended up buying this device right here, because I wanted another uh, data point to make sure that, um, or to see if this was really giving me accurate readings or not. So this device right here has the capability for you to enter the price of the electricity. So I think the national average is right around 13 cents or something like that. So you can stick that in here and it will give you your power usage as well as a calculation of how much you're actually spending. Now I've got this all plugged in and the computer is completely off. Uh, a little bit more about the system. This is a, uh, again, a Threadripper system with a Zenith 2 Extreme. Uh, it's got a AX1500i, which is a 1500 watt power supply. So it's built for a lot of potential power consumption. It's also got a uh, RTX 3090, a couple M.2 SSDs and a bunch of a couple pumps and a bunch of fans for water cooling so uh, aside from the water cooling you could probably expect this kind of build in a top end uh, thread ripper or a workstation type computer so right now this is currently plugged in and like i said and it is drawing about 10 watts of power by just being powered off so there's a little bit of leds or rgb leds on the motherboard going on but I guess this is kind of like phantom power. Um, there is a fan controller, a Quero fan controller up top that is powered on, that's just running in the background. So at 10 watts of just idle off power, um, it's saying that it's gonna cost about $8 per month of just leaving it off uh, 24 seven. And that's actually kind of surprising to me because it's, it's costing $8 just to leave this computer off. Now, what happens if I turn this computer on? Well, initially right here, you can see that this computer spikes up to about 190 watts during power up. And once we'll let this settle down and get to the desktop and we'll take another look at how much power uh, this computer consumes at an idle state. All right, now the computer is on, it's booted. It's currently sitting at the desktop. And as you can see, the CPU is kind of uh, calm down a little bit after the initial boot and the computer is idling at almost 300 to 330 it's fluctuating a little bit uh, watts sitting idle uh, 300 watts for this computer just to be able to be powered on not even doing anything intensive that is a lot of power and uh, I don't know if it's the 3090 or if it's the Threadripper system or just all the fans because I've got um, four radiators in there with push pulls. That's four, eight, 
32 fans, 33 fans actually. Uh, I got a total of 33 fans running at about 500 RPM. So, <laughs> well, certainly the fans is gonna be a part of it, but uh, also the Threadripper CPU sitting at idle, uh, costing about 300 watts of power continuously just idle. So, um, yeah, that's actually quite a bit. You know, that's that's surprising. Now, when until I fire up the 3090 or uh, the CPU, because check this out. So if I were to fire up Heaven, for example, I've got Heaven running in the background and it's stressing both the CPU and the GPU because we can see, uh, we know that the GPU is pulling right around 380 watts, plus or minus, maybe up to 400 watts, give or take. Uh, and then the CPU, We've got at least a couple cores maxed out and it's running at 4.27 gigahertz here. Oh, and the CPU is running automatic everything with PBO because that's how you get the best single threaded performance on the Threadripper systems. Uh, on IQ here, we can see that it's saying that power in is 629, 630 watts, power out 600 watts, so it's pushing about 600 watts to the system, both the CPU, GPU, uh, it's pulling about 630 watts. And now if we take a look at the actual power meter here, it's saying that we're pulling in 650 watts. So 650 watts, 630 watts, that's within what, 10% of what the reading is. So the IQ digital output, input output readings are pretty accurate based off of, compared to what I'm seeing here. Well, running, uh, gaming benchmarks, both loading the CPU and the GPU, I'm seeing about 650 some watts. When idle, I'm doing about 300 some watts. So uh, what that means is the CPU really isn't down clocking all that much in terms of voltages and power consumption. So that 300 to 600 Delta, that's basically purely from the GPU. Now escalating this out, it's saying that the cost to actually run this computer, let's say 24 seven for about a month is right around $37. So $37 just to run this benchmark uh, nonstop, pulling that 600 plus watts or 500 to 600 watts. When you factor it out and you talk about a year's worth of uh, power consumption, that's what $460, that's almost $500 worth of power just to run it 24 seven. Now granted, you're not running it 24 seven, but uh, if you are an avid gamer, for example, um, you know, you're playing eight hours a day of gaming, then you're at least running at least a couple hundred dollars worth of electricity in your power bill. So numbers can add up. Now, if I were to just stress the CPU with Cinebench here, and we can see that the GPU really isn't cr clocking up at all, uh, the power consumption jumps to right around 620. So what this means is with the GPU in idle, CPU alone, uh, we got a about 300 watt increase in power consumption. So what this suggests is that the CPU can pull almost 300 additional watts just by itself. Now, if I were to run uh, Heaven benchmark right on top of running Cinebench here, you can see this is probably the most extreme example because you've you're uh, stressing the CPU 100% and then you're also stressing the GPU 100%. In this situation here, uh, I can see that I'm pulling close to 800, 800 watts. I'm spiking almost close to 900 watts. So if we take a quick look at uh, IQ here, you can see IQ 879 watts. It's all over the place because Cinebench is running, 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 and this is running, running, running. So uh, what does this mean? Well, if I were to run both the CPU and GPU flat out in, in some compute style workloads, then that means this computer can pull about 900 watts from the wall. Now, 900 watts given it's a titanium plus power supply, so about 95% efficiency, uh, you're talking about maybe like 850 watts of actual power delivery. So I've got a 1500 watt power supply, but realistically about a thousand watt power supply or maybe even an 860 is potentially enough to get by with the constant load. Now, uh, we have heard about the, the power spikes surges of the 3090 and 3080 series. So I can't really speak on that and really know what the limit is or my highest 
lowest power limit of a PSU that's able to do support that. But that really just shows that even a very hungry, power hungry CPU, uh, 24 core CPU, and a very power hungry GPU only pull in 900 some watts when loading both the CPU and the GPU in an unrealistic workload. Again, if I were to just play a game, run Heaven Benchmark, drop that power consumption drops back down to somewhere much more reasonable, right around 600. So uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is you can add up all the different components in 100% load and, and spec your system out for that, but realize that most of the time you're really not running your system like that because uh, you're not gonna be running Senate Bench and Heaven at the same time, or uh, you're not gonna be running, you know, games don't run the CPU at 100% workload and the GPU at 100% workload at the same time. So, um, and just another thing to think about, I guess, that's all. So I am gonna end the video right here. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you wanna see more, consider subscribing. My name is Stan, I'll see you guys in the next one.